So Tom, Hi. this season, it's bringing the drama and you are in a lot of it. Um, yeah. How is watching the season back for you? <sighs> you know, I gotta say, first half of the season was a little intense, a little doom and gloom, but like the second half of the season for me, if I can take myself out of the equation, my own neuroses and everything, and the, the, the shame and pain of having to watch yourself on TV, I don't know if you get that, but um, I think it's awesome. It feels like vintage VPR. It's, a, it's like the drama's still there, the stakes are there, but it feels a little more lighthearted. I love it. I've watched, I've seen every episode because we already did the reunion, but I think it's really, 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 really good. So I, yeah, I think it's a great season. And the, and the second half of the season's a little, a little light on its feet, a little bit. Not so, you know what, of all. Mm -hmm. Intensive. We're loving the season. Fans are loving the season. Thank you. But do you wish you had done anything differently as you watch it back? Mm. I wish I would have maybe had a stronger voice. There was a lot of times just coming out of such an intense year of my family members almost dying. My dad was in the hospital seven months. My brother, like, yeah, was like essentially being sent to hospice. Other brother got canned. It was so intense getting the divorce, selling the house, you know, the like our business getting. I just, I kind of lost my mind a little bit. I think, um, and I kind of wish. I would have handled it better, you know. I did. I did not thrive under pressure, but I think I, I'm probably a, a better, stronger person because of it. And um, maybe some of the stuff with Joe too. It's like you're kind of seeing like the remnants of our relation, what, what we had. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a really, whatever you want to call it. Our, we, we we had some magic before, and like what you're seeing now play out is kind of the remnants of it. We were in a different place, and I, I wish I would have done a better job communicating the reasons why I pulled away, as opposed to just doing it. Um, so yeah, you know, I never. Never intended to hurt or anything. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I guess I wish that I had more of like valor, more composure, more, more, more like, um, oh, what's a better word? I don't know. More mojo. No, not more mojo. That's not the word. <laughs> I don't know. Just more calmness under pressure. Okay. You know? I thought I was kind of flailing a lot, spastic, and like a bit of a basket case. But uh, it, was a, it was an era, and I think that era's over. New beginnings. Now I know you mentioned Joe. I was gonna I was gonna ask about Joe. So what went on between you two? Joe said she was hoping for a future with you two. Were you ever interested in dating her or was it more just kind of a casual? Um I think it was I don't know what label you would put on it, especially in this day and age, but like I I'll just say for a while there it really felt right. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't know if it was a situation ship, but it felt right. But I think that I had my guard up a little bit coming out of a 13 year relationship and still reeling from the trauma of like going back and forth across the country and trying to like all of a sudden kind of being like the patriarch of my family and just dealing with like all these medical emergencies, the unrelenting financial pressure of the bar. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't feel like I was in a good place to be in, 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 in a relationship, any sort of traditional conventional mm -hmm. relationship. And I communicated that, but at times I will acknowledge that maybe it got blurred because it, it felt right and we did have fun together. And then, this, you know, there was like some of this little things that caused me to pull away and yeah. I just, yeah, I'll say it again, I kind of wish I would have been more upfront and communicated that to her as opposed to just kind of quietly, slowly pulling away, you know? Mm -hmm. so, and do you still talk with her? Um, like maybe, maybe here and there, mm -hmm. just like niceties. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm always rooting for her. I think mm -hmm. Joe's an awesome person. Um, one of the best Wisconsin representatives out there diehard she's had and um, just an overall uh, a bright light in the universe and she's gonna be fine she's gonna find success and happiness I think she's dating I don't know I'm dating I'm happy so yeah man we're doing our thing so you say you're dating well what can you tell us about that I mean the D word is like I know I, I I'm, I'm happy it's mm -hmm. it's kind of new and exciting I kind of feel at peace for the first time in a long time and um, you know it's been really pleasant mm -hmm. um, her name's Sophia, and uh, yeah, she's she's a marketing manager and strategist, and she also has like a vintage uh, clothing store, mm -hmm. Shop Sosco, check it out. Um, and she's just really effing cool. She's so charismatic and clever and like kind of unconventionally funny. She's way cooler than me. Um, hopefully the audience gets to meet her someday. I don't know, I don't know, but anyway, she's just a badass human being, yeah. And what drew you to her? Like what brought you two together? Um, it's funny you say that because like when I around the time I met her was the time that I made a pledge to myself 
you're not going to date for a while. You're going to be. Stu- that's when it happens. That, I that's did, when. That's what, how I met my husband. Are you serious? I'm not, I'm not even lying. I'm I d- not lying. And I did a. I had a formal moment with myself into the universe. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to stay single for like two years, bust my ass, make money, take care of my family, travel, mm-hmm. and then I met her, and I was like, what the heck? I was just like, oh. I just like it was one of those moments where like everything kind of froze, time stood still, and I was just like, oh my god, who is this human being? Like she has a presence, and um, it's when you're not looking for it that yeah. it comes to you, you know. It's like I met her when I was like the last thing on my mind in life, literally. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm glad we bumped into each other. Well, I'm glad you're so happy. That's so Thanks. exciting that you have someone new in your life. Thank you. Yeah. Now taking a bit of a pivot. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Uh, fans are kind of over the scandal of it yes. all. Now, are you over it as well? I, just hearing that word, A, is slightly triggering, but B, I, it, it gives me brain rot. Like, it's I, it, 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 it's like a plume of brain fog. It's just, I, everyone's over it. I understand that. Luckily, I think the second half of the season is less that of all, uh, like mm-hmm. I said, intensive. And there's some, like, fun, lighthearted stuff. And I feel like me and Katie have some really good fun banter. And um, I think, yeah, it's just a little, it's a little more, it's a little lighter hearted. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, I have, I think we all have, you know what of all fatigue. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I ever hear that word again, I'm gonna snap. I'll try not to say it again. Okay. <laughs> now, do you think there's any world where your new girl might be making a debut on Vanderpump Rules or any, the Bravo verse? I would love if she filmed. Um, of course, I'll give her all the disclaimers because it can be intense if you've never done television before. Having your your life, uh, your emotions put on display for others to judge can be terrifying, and it's not for everyone. And you might think it's fun because you know you're kind of romanticized with the idea of being on television. It is cool. I'm not gonna lie, it's cool to be on a TV show. But when you're in the trenches and you're dissecting aspects of your relationship and where it went wrong or infidelity or something, it's it's like gut-wrenching, soul-sucking, and it's really hard to relive with it. millions of people judging. But that being said, it is really fun. If you ever see this, Sophia, think about it. <laughs> now, not trying to scare Sophia, but do you think she's the one? I, I, listen, I'm just taking it like day by day right now, um, but I really enjoy her company. Like, we just started, mm-hmm. we, well, we've known each other kind of a while now, but I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm I'm just really happy and mm-hmm. at peace with her right now. Or with life, yeah. Has she met any of the other cast members? Yeah. Just in like casual hangouts? Yeah. Yeah, or yeah, anything yeah, yeah. Like what do they think? She's met um she's met a lot of them. She's met Jax, Brittany, well that's the Valley. But she's met at Sandoval, she's met who else has she met? Sheena. Um, You're asking me, I don't I I'm, I'm not thinking sure. out loud here. Uh, who else? Yeah. She's met some of them. That's awesome. Yeah. But she gets along great with everybody. That's mm-hmm. like one of my favorite things about her. I introduce her to people. She's just so genuine and like instantly like makes a connection with people. She's uh, very gregarious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I know we were ta- we've been talking about Vanderpump Rules. A lot of fans are thinking this could be the last season of Vanderpump Rules. Do you think it should be? Um, I hope not. I don't want to end on you know what. Mm-hmm. Just like I, I feel like we're all like finally in a good place again. Like the girls are getting ready to open up their sandwich shop. Mm-hmm. We're launching Schwartz and Sandy's 2.0. We have new drinks, new food, new music, live performances. Like I feel like we're on the precipice of like a real a new chapter, mm-hmm. a new beginning for us as a group of friends and everything. And I feel like we just have so much more life to give. Also, everyone on the show. I'm not talking about myself, but everyone's just so f- entertaining. I hope the show doesn't end Mm because like for me I I don't love seeing myself on television like we talked about earlier but when I watch it back I'm like my friends are hilarious and wildly entertaining and problematic we talked about Katie Um, where do things stand with her how are you both um I think we're far better than we were after the Mexico incident Um, you know it's kind of she like more or less completely uh, banished me from her life and Mm -hmm. her family and um, up until then, we ha- I think we were like model divorcees. We really handled it well, you know? And then we took a long break from each other, but I'm like, I think now it's kind of like a delightful love-hate dynamic, mm-hmm. but like, facetiously. Like not, you know, it's, 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 it's nice, you know? I feel like um, we have like a f- playful little banter and um, there's like, there's no, there's no illusions of us ever, ever getting back together. There's mm-hmm. very clearly defined boundaries, you know what I mean? So it makes it very easy just 
it, it, it makes it easy to navigate life after the divorce, you know. There's no residual feelings. I'll always love Katie, and her name will probably always be tattooed on my ass, but, like, hey, we'll never get back together, and we know that, mm -hmm. and that's it, it just makes it easier to, to, to forge ahead as friends, right? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what did you feel when you heard that Katie had slept with your best friend, Max? <laughs> okay, I did not see that question coming. <laughs> okay, forgot about that. Um, by the way, that was a plot twist. That, I did not see that on my 2023 bingo card of all the weird stuff that happened. I just was like, what? I was like flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. I was like, Max, the guy that used to run TomTom. Tom. Max, my buddy, like one of my closest friends, Max, that I go hiking with every week. You shagged Max? And she's just like, yeah, he was, he was there. I was there. <laughs> Tequila was there. And it just sort of happened. And I'm like, wah. And by the way, honestly, in, in light of having a very traumatic, like in most intense year of my life, it, it, it did strike me as weird, but it's, it was almost like, I'm not going to say, <laughs> it was, it felt very inconsequential, you know? It's like, it just, I, I and, 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 and honestly, I was so happy to be on good terms with Katie again. I didn't want to bust her balls too much. But for the record, I had to like point out, you know, the hypocrisy, because she really lit my life on fire for the whole Mexico kiss, and then she's shagging one of my closest dear friends. But anyways, Max apologized to me like right away. We're cool, and and Katie's like, <laughs> she didn't apologize. She's like, I did it. So deal with it, bitch. I was like, okay. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. I just, she hit me with the, it is what it is. Um, and you just filmed the reunion. Yeah. What can you tease for us? <sighs> I'm not good at teasing. I filmed three teases today and they were so lackluster. Um, but like, for me, season 10, without a doubt, was the most intense reunion mm -hmm. of all time. Uh, like, I, I still sometimes replay that in my mind. It was so uncomfortable. And this season, I felt a lot more, I felt there was a lot of love, but it was raw and people did not hold back. And um, it was uncomfortable, but like, just like the heartfelt, just raw emotion, just flowing the entire time. A lot of tears, everybody cried at least once. Mm -hmm. I cried um, like three times. And yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I left just feeling sad about where our group was and how fractured it is right now, mm -hmm. you know? It's like Lala and Ariana haven't been getting along great. Uh, Lala and, Sh like, Sheena and, and Lala and Katie haven't been getting along great. Um, I, I, I just, I like when we're all one big happy family, and I know people online are like, Tom, we hate you, everybody needs to get along, stick, drop it. But, like, that comes from the heart. It's sincere. Mm -hmm. I love these people, and I miss our group dynamic. Um, that being said, I'm, I'm pretty dang good terms with everybody, except for Ariana. That's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how are you liking watching The Valley? I love The Valley. Because I know all of those people. Mm -hmm. I hang out with all of those people. Mm -hmm. They're my friends. So uh, it's it's yummy to watch, you know? It's salacious. And it's like, because I know them. We're tight. But you, we don't really get into the inner workings of their relationships. Mm -hmm. I hear murmurs, but I mind my own business. So it's, it's, it's fascinating to watch it play out with, like, Jesse and Michelle and, like, Jax and Brittany and, mm -hmm. like, my God, I think it's I think it's uh, juicy and wonderful, and I, I can't wait to watch more. I no. dig the valley. I support the valley. Yeah. Will you be on the valley? There's a few crossovers. Okay. I think I make a few cameos. Okay. And um, I mean more as a more full time may, member, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. You live in the valley. I'm, so? I'm, yeah, Jax is one of my best friends in the world, and we're actually we're actually working on some stuff with uh, yeah, yeah cross pollinating promotions for the bar. So. Mm -hmm. I love the guy, and um, yeah, I'm sure I'll pop in the valley once in a while. Now, speaking of Jax, do you think that Brittany, um, should Brittany not go back to Jax? Should she go back to him? What do you think as a hmm. third party? I should be careful with my words. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, part of me thinks they're at the point of no return. Mm -hmm. I know they're trying to work things out, and they're giving each other space. I don't know what's going on. I haven't really asked. I don't know if they're dating other people. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I think whatever's going to happen, this break was, n it was necessary. Mm -hmm. And it was a long time coming, and um, I think some space will be good for them. I don't know, but I, I respect the heck out of how they're handling it with Cruz, their, their son. Mm -hmm. It's been very uh, amicable and cordial, and, um, you know, part of me hopes they make it, but there's another part of me that's like a huge proponent champion for, like, separation and divorce. It's not mm -hmm. really that sad to me. I think it's much sadder when people stay together who aren't happy. 
I'm a, I'm a divorce champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. You and your ex-wife went out with the same girl. Who was interested in her first? Um, Tori's actually a friend of mine. So like our date was, you could, I mean, I think you can tell watching it. There's, I don't, I don't think there's a romantic future for us together. Mm -hmm. We're, it's more platonic. Mm -hmm. We're friends. Like mm -hmm. she's like my girl, bro. But we had a fun date. I think her and Katie had more of a romance. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they've pursued that or where mm -hmm. they stand, but. Tori's great, man. I thought she. I think she was great on the show, and also just great in life. She's a. She's really funny, talented. She's a singer, musician, artist, and she's got a lot of spunk. And uh, yeah, look out for Tori. And what were your thoughts about being in a love triangle? So weird. How did it come to this? How did it come to this? I'm telling you, something happened during the pandemic, and uh, I got thrust into a parallel universe. And I'm happy to be here with you guys. But this is not my life, man. <laughs> This is not what I signed up for. Anyways, yeah. Yep, parallel universe. You heard it. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, and then last question. Um, so the this is this is more of a lighthearted question. Yeah. But the water sommelier. <laughs> yes. We need to talk about this. Could you really taste the difference? Yeah. What was that like? Especially the ones with the high mineral content. Um, yeah, and like uh, especially the ones with a lot of sodium in there, which are better for hydration or if you're hungover. But like. Yeah, um, I think I'm proud of my palate. I really could taste the difference. A thousand dollar water was like, mwah, forget about it. Um, once you go thousand dollar water, you can't go back. There's no going back. There's no from going that. back. No. Yeah. no. So, <laughs> anyways, um, I love that guy. He's, he's he's a TikTok sensation. So check him out. Yeah. I love his stuff. Me he's, too. He's fun to watch. Me too. I just had to know though if it actually could taste a difference. Oh, I really could. Because okay. we were skeptical in the beginning. We we're mm -hmm. like kind of like we're doing one of these like do water something. Like, hey, water's water, but no, water is not water. <laughs> and it's like I'll never taste it the same way. Um, I love Fiji water. In case you're wondering, and Mountain Spring is my favorite. The green glass bottles. Shout out to Mountain Spring. That's what we can carry at Schwartz and Sandy's. No, I'm an Aquapana girl. Aquapana is so world good. class elite. And he vouched for Aquapana. Let's go. It's in a glass bottle. I feel like it tastes better. Totally. You know? Yeah, it's ritzier, classier. <laughs> Something about it just feels like high society. For sure. Yeah. Well, on that note, thank you so much for stopping by today and chatting with me about all this. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. And I like this parallel universe. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I said it was good <laughs> for me.